Hello, everyone. I'm joined by Mike James, publisher of the midreport.com, Navy's home on the rivals.com network. We're going to take a good look here at the Navy midshipmen. They are two and six entering the game against Notre Dame this weekend. But Mike, that two and six also includes what seems to be a Navy team that is playing at a much cleaner and better level than they were at the beginning of the season. What do you think is key to Navy's improvement? I think it's a couple things. Um, I think at the beginning of the season, uh, I think there might have been a little bit of overlooking of just how inexperienced Navy was offensively. Um, you had two quarterbacks, both sophomores, that were um, fighting for the starting job. Um, and after 2020, you know, those sophomores didn't really have the, the, a normal practice experience um, that that you would expect. So it's sort of like they're, they're freshmen. And Gradually, as the season has gone on, quarterback play has improved. Um, offensive line pl play has improved a little bit. And then, you know, with the win against Tulsa, the, the competition just hasn't been as difficult. You know, we're playing Houston, SMU, um, mm -hmm. Cincinnati, obviously. You know, those are three top 25 teams. And once Navy finally got a game against someone that just wasn't quite up to that level, they were able to break through for a win. So, um, it's been a couple of things, um, but mostly just it, it's just the offense getting up to speed. Yeah, they looked really clean against Tulsa in that victory. A lot of us got to, a chance to watch it since it was a Friday night game. H has Navy settled in on, on Ty Lavatai as the starting quarterback? Yeah, they have. They they were competing for the job in, in fall camp. Um, Ty Lavatai came out. It was the starter in the Marshall game, got injured, got leg whipped and hurt his, his knee a bit was out for a few games, but since he's been healthy, um, since the UCF game, he's been starting every, every game since. There's a couple really good uh, tacklers in this game in terms of stats nationally ranked for, for Navy. Uh, Diego Fago is one of the, I think he's ranked 25th in the nation in tackles and he's a bigger guy. I mean, he looks like a legit division one, a player. Tell us a little bit about him and, and why he's so productive. You know, it's interesting at a service academy, you sort of have to, when, when recruiting, you sort of have to choose between size and speed. You'll get one, but you won't always get the other. But with Fago, you kind of have both. Um, and I think his with that that size, he, he brings um, something to the table you don't usually see at a service academy. Um, he's a very rangy player. You know, he moves sideline to sideline. In Brian Newberry's defense, uh, you're sort of everyone is supposed kind of expected to do everything. Everyone's expected to blitz, which but everyone is also expected to be able to drop back in, in coverage. And for someone of Fago's size to be able to do both comfortably means he's making plays all over the field. If Navy is to have a successful day on offense, aside from the quarterbacks, who do you think has the hot hand right now? I know there's a bunch of guys that carry the ball, but who do you feel most has the hot hand? in that option offense? Well, the most consistent runners have been the fullbacks. Um, with Isaac Ruas and James Harris combined, they're getting more than 100 yards a game. Um, but the real question about whether or not Navy is going to be able to move the ball effectively kind of falls on the offensive line. Um, there's been a lot of personnel shakeups, uh, especially in the interior line at, at center. Um, and being able to um, to, to block, you know, block your assignment consistently and keep people out of the backfield. They've had some, there's been some trouble recently, especially Cincinnati did a very good job of, of timing the snap count and, and making plays in the backfield. Tulsa did the same thing. Um, so it's, it's really comes to how well the offensive line is, is blocking up front. What does this series mean uh, to Navy from Navy's perspective? We, the, on the Notre Dame side of things, it's well documented how, the Naval Academy essentially rented out the University of Notre Dame back during World War II and provided a, a financial means for the university to basically survive. Um, and, and that's and Notre Dame remains committed to playing Navy every year. But from Navy's standpoint, they've made, they've remained committed to play every year despite joining a conference over time and, and whatnot. So from Navy, you know, from your viewpoint, why is this so special to the Naval Academy? You know, if you look at at any program sort of along Navy's lines, whether it's a service academy or any group of five type program, they all schedule games against higher profile schools. You know, they, they have their, their money games that they go out and schedule, but you'll never see an annual rivalry against the same one that has this kind of history. And mm -hmm. 
it's invaluable. You know, it, it's it's a complete. It, it's something that makes Navy stand out compared to other programs. And you know, none of these guys were recruited by Notre Dame, so for them to be able to go and 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 compete at that level and and show what they can do, you know, it's a chip on your shoulder kind of game a little bit. But it, but from financially recruiting, you know, just the whole package, it's something that makes Navy stand out amongst its peers. Um, it's something that they uh, really value. I know it's not as big as the Army game. That's a game that my household always watches. I feel like it should be a national holiday. It's so much fun to watch that game. Um, but Navy has had some success against Notre Dame over the last 15 years. Uh, you know, I think the, the streak ended in what, 2008 or 2009? And then. 2007. Yeah. 2007, excuse me. Um, and, and they've won since then as well against Notre Dame. Um, what do you feel this time around in the 2021 version? If Navy were to pull off the upset against Notre Dame, what do you feel they would need to do really well in order to pull that off? You know, it's it's kind of frustrating if you're a Navy fan to look at this year's matchup because if Navy was playing up to the level of past Navy teams, this might be one of those games where you think that maybe they could have a shot just because statistically there's nothing that really stands out about Notre Dame, you know, that, that, that they're necessarily dominant. Um, but, you know, that's never really the case, though, because when, you know, if even if when Notre Dame has, has problems, Notre Dame's problems at playing at the level that Notre Dame plays isn't always the same as, you know, problems at, at, you know, Navy isn't always the kind of team that is able to, to exploit those problems. I think really the the biggest issue for Navy is just number one, matching up physically. You know, Mm -hmm. you have to, I actually thought Navy had a very good game plan in 2019 offensively, but Notre Dame was so physically dominant that they were living in Navy's backfield and Navy couldn't get anything going. Um, so matching up physically, being able to carry out your assignments that way. And if you can do that, then you can control the clock, control the ball, frustrate, frustrate the Irish a little bit. And that's just the classic Navy formula, how they, how they win most of their games against you no know, bigger, stronger, faster competition. But really, it, for Navy, it just comes down to execution, getting three, four yards at a time, holding onto the ball, getting you those big plays opportunities when they show up. And if you can do that, then they could, you know, if the offense is clicking, they have a chance to compete against anyone. It's just that this season, the offense hasn't clicked very much. I still find the triple option attack to be very enjoyable to watch. It's just amazing. The, the service academies and a particular Navy, how fast they run. And I know the opposing teams just, they, they can't fully mimic it in practice. There's just no way to do it. And that's what makes uh, Navy often so tough to play. Mike James, thank you for your time. Publisher of the midreport.com. Check it out. Navy fans, check it out. Notre Dame fans. If you want to get caught up, on the game ahead this weekend. Thanks again, bud. Thanks for having me.